Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is John Russo, and I'm the co-director of the Center for Working Class Studies here at Youngstown State. And on behalf of the other members of the center, I want to welcome you to the first event in our 14th annual lecture series. The mission of the Center for Working Class Studies is to promote understanding of working class lives, communities, experiences, cultures, and all their complexity through education, the arts, media, and research. We began talking with Senator Brown's staff about bringing him here to talk to our students and to the community about health care way back in April. We didn't know that five months later, the nation would be embroiled in such a heated debate over the future of health care. At the center of this debate is Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown. Tonight, we are honored to have him here to discuss the health care crisis and working class communities. Please welcome Senator Sherrod Brown. I, I heard the rules. I had no introductions, but you know, I asked I asked John if it's okay to introduce my wife Connie, who is here, and he said I can actually do that. So, Connie. Uh, Connie spoke here last year, not exactly in this lecture series, but spoke here, and she she um, she very much has her own life. Writes from Plain Dealer, some of you know, and she um, doesn't get a chance to. We don't get a chance to go to each other's things all that often, but. And she knew I was coming to YSU, and she knew I was coming to speak to the Center for Working Class Studies, and she knew that she would get to see Sherry and John. She was here, so that's why she's here. You too. You did. <laughs> Most of what I'm going to say, she's heard before. So, but a few new things, no, but um, thank you very much. And I, I am so grateful to John Russo, and so grateful to Sherry Lincoln, and so grateful to the work that Patty LaPresta does that that um, you, don't, you don't know how good this is. You don't know, frankly, you know, when, you, when you live someplace, it's like when you, you, know, you live in a city and you don't go to all the tourist attractions. When you live in Youngstown and you're in the middle of the Mahoney Valley and you're in the middle of the Youngstown community and you, you see YSU all around you, you don't, you don't really understand how important the Center for Working Class Studies is. And, you know, when I, when I um, every, every, every presidential year, uh, the national media kind of flies in and they find some Ohio workers, and they like coming to, to go to Warren or Girard or Hubbard or Youngstown or Poland or, or Boardman or wherever they like to go. And they like to interview real live workers, especially white male workers, and see what they think. Well, that's kind of what always happens. Well, those days are over because of what's happened with the YSU Center for Working Class Studies. Uh, you know, people are much more in tune with what's going on with workers in this state and in this in the valley and in this state and in this country. And that really is because of what you've done here. Connie, as I said, is a newspaper editor, a newspaper publisher, columnist, sorry. <laughs> not an editor or publisher at all, she's a columnist. And she, um, she says to me all the time how often now she sees, uh, she sees John Russo quoted and she sees the, the Center for Working Class Studies quoted. And, in articles around the country, and that you really are putting on the map issues that, frankly, um, more and more reporters that are dressed like this, whose parents weren't labor union members, Connie's mom and mom or dad was a carry union card for 36 years, but most reporters anymore, most newspaper reporters, um, have parents who went to college that, that didn't carry a union card in most cases, and they don't see labor issues and working class issues the same way that a generation ago reporters did. And that's, that's another reason that the work that, that, that John, that you do, and Sherry, that you do, and this, this whole operation does, all that is so very, very important. Um, Connie spoke here last year, and she, Connie, Connie is a Pulitzer Prize winner who won the Pulitzer Prize for uh, what the what the committee said was her pungent columns that have provided a voice for the underdog and the underprivileged. Uh, I, 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 Connie is, a, is an incredibly good speaker. I'm glad I'm not speaking the same night she is. But her, her writing, more importantly, even than her speaking, is, is shaped by the experience of having, a, of having working class parents. As she said, my parents, her parents both died in their 60s. She said they wore their bodies out so I didn't have to. Um, her mom was a home care worker. Uh, her mother, uh, when her mother, I did not know Connie in those days because her mother died several years ago. And Connie and I have been married only five, but when Connie's mom died, she was a home care worker, as I said, she had 800 people come to her wake because she touched so many lives. As I said, her dad carried a union card for 36 years, and 
And she, she writes like that and understands that I, I came from a background very different. I grew up in Mansfield, Ohio, not too far from here, an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes maybe. And I grew up in a family with more privilege than that, but I grew up with the, the son of parents who cared a lot about social justice. My mother grew up in a small town in the South, uh, and she always understood race in the way that Americans should understand race. One of her heroes was, was Martin Luther King. One of her heroes was, was um, Bobby Kennedy. She was very active in the YWCA, one of the groups that for decades has fought for, for civil rights and for equal rights for women. And that's what my mother taught me. And I, I, uh, I come to my support of organized labor and my interest in working class issues um, that way, very different from my wife, very different from many of you, but I also come, come at it because when I was many years ago in the legislature, I used to, when the legislature was out of session, um, I used to sit in union halls at the Steelworkers Hall, Local 169 in Mansfield, and Local 549 UAW in Mansfield, and sit there for hours and hours just listening to people talk about why, why trade unionism mattered, why uh, social justice and economic justice played such an important role in our country. And some years ago, and this maybe explains that better than, than I just did, some years ago I was given this, um, this lapel pen, which you can't see, of course, from the back, but it's, a, it's given to me by a steel worker. Uh, I was telling us we were honoring Workers Memorial Day in April every year, honoring workers who were killed in the job or injured. And this is a depiction of a canary in a birdcage, the mine workers, as you know from studying labor history. And as you know, as activist citizens, the mine workers used to take the canary down in the mine. If the canary died from lack of oxygen or from toxic gas, the mine worker knew he had to get out of the mine. He was totally on his own. He had no union strong enough, nor no government, nor a government uh, that cared enough uh, to, to, to help him. And so he was on his own. In those days, 100 plus years ago, when the mine workers took the canary down in the mines, the, um, in those days, a uh, uh, life expectancy of a child born in, say, 1900 or 1910 was about 45 years in this country. Today, a child born in, in Niles or Gerard or Hubbard or Liberty Township or Youngstown or wherever, a child born in this country has a life expectancy of about three decades longer than that. And the reason for that, more than anything, is the role of, of the trade union movement in this country because it was the trade union movement that year in and year out fought for the changes that, that helped us live longer and healthier lives. We don't live 30 years longer because of high-tech medicine. That certainly saved lives, certainly helped many of us individually to, to add a decade or two or sometimes to our lives. But what really has helped the whole population in living longer, healthier lives are, are what the trade union movement and people in their churches and temples and people in their uh, in their ethnic groups and their neighborhood organizations have fought for everything from safe drinking water laws to clean air laws to prohibition on child labor to civil rights to women's rights uh, to Medicare to Social Security to Medicaid to Food and Drug Administration and pure food laws uh, to rights for the disabled. All the things that, 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 that so many people, so many progressives, so many trade unionists in this country fought for and it was always against the opposition of the most powerful people in society. Uh, Medicare passed over the strong opposition of medical interests. Uh, we know something about that today in this healthcare fight. A little bit more on that, or more on that later. Um, the safe drinking water, clean air laws passed over the opposition of the chemical industry and the steel industry. Um, workers' compensation of minimum wage passed over the strong opposition again of the most privileged business interests in this country. On issue after issue after issue. All of we move forward as a country with a strong progressive labor movement that in, in so many ways got us there that we, we never would have had without it. 